How's it going guys? So, new series starting and hopefully it's something that uh, goes quite well and is well received. Bear with me with the intro guys because I've got a lot to explain for the very first episode at least. Uh, hopefully you guys agree and enjoy the, the videos like I say. Basically what I'm going to be doing in this series is starting off with my lower level account which doesn't have curses, it doesn't have prayers, and it, it has ancient magics, but not very, really much else. It doesn't have overloads, all that sort of stuff, basically. And I want to be able to go out and try all of these bosses, like God Wars Dungeon 2, uh, things like that, racks maybe, and maybe even one day do Telos. Now, the reason I want to do this is because I talk quite a lot about new players and lower levels sort of being able to do more stuff in the game, and just even the last RuneScape video I did, I mentioned the fact of having lower level bosses in the game. So what I wanted to do is see if any of the higher level bosses being starting from maybe God Wars Dungeon 1 and 2 are even worth doing as a average level account. And if so, basically let you guys know which ones are worth doing and which ones aren't. Now, if this doesn't go well at all, then hey, we've learned that bossing isn't really available until you've got certain things unlocked, and you guys get to watch me die over and over at bosses. However, if it does work, then you guys will get some information on bosses that are worth doing, and hopefully it'll be quite entertaining along the way. So, with that said, guys, I am going to be starting off with maybe two or three bosses in this episode. We will see how it goes. Hopefully, uh, at least one of them goes well, so that I can at least say that, guys, you can do this boss with not much, too much effort, and it probably is worth your time, and even though it's not most efficient, you can definitely go ahead and do that for a bit of extra money while having fun. Anyway, guys, if you enjoy the series, make sure to leave a like, do subscribe, get in the comments, guys, because I love hearing from you all. I try to reply to every single comment, so get in there, and uh, let's just crack on, because this intro has taken ages. Right, so the first boss we're going to be looking at is Vindicta. Now, the reason I've chosen Vindicta is he's kind of like a... It's a fairly decent boss to start off with, I'd say, and he has a couple of mechanics, but nothing too outrageous that you're going to have to deal with. So I think for someone learning, I'd probably recommend they do come to Vindicta to learn. Now, as you can see in my inventory here, I don't have overloads. I don't have um, loads of other stuff like switches and that, and I'm, what I'm going in is range. Now, the reason I'm starting with range is because this is the gear that's in my bank already. And also, my highest level is range at 90, and while he doesn't have any weaknesses, I believe range is something that people don't really use at Vindicta. I'm not sure if there's a reason why, and to be honest, I'm not going to do a ton of research into this, because people who are a lower level aren't going to be massively experienced. I'm just going to go in there, give it a go, and see how it goes, and then sort of do some revision afterwards, possibly, to see if I can make it possible, and then give you guys an idea on that. Now, let's not waste more time. I just remembered I need to buy a shield. Not buy a shield. I need to get a shield. Um, which I should have one in here somewhere. We'll just use the ranged one there. Uh, and then we'll head off because we're going to need the defensives for sure. We're going to, that, that res from his thing is going to be incredibly useful. Um, we do have a book. I believe we've got charges on that. Oh, we can't even do that yet. So as you can see, this is basically going off someone who's low level. Let's go in, see how it goes. And, uh, the first couple of kills might be a bit rusty, but we'll, we'll just see how it goes. You never know. It might go well. We do have an aura as well. So let's get that on. Uh, we've got the sharpshooter one, but we also have vampirism, so we'll see which one's best to use, and we'll just stick with the re the regular one hour, and let's uh, see how this goes, see if we can get any kills. So we're probably just going to camp the melee protect, because that makes sense to me. Uh, we don't have death swift, so let's just throw out all of our thresholds, like there's no point in uh, holding them. So, so far we've not had to eat too much yet, I'm hoping we can get to the bit where we can get a res without using too much food, because at that point... I'm hoping that we'll probably take enough damage on the ranged hit that we can res back to full health pretty much every time. And it doesn't matter too much about the kill times as long as it doesn't take all day. Like the main thing is that we can get kills. Um, it's fun to do and it's better to do this than just AFK at the Grand Exchange and making money that way. And if you get this boss down, there's a chance of that 45 mil drop at the moment. Now, if you're looking at my skills and thinking, well, a noob wouldn't have that set up. I mean, you could just definitely copy that. So, absolutely no problem. Missed our first uh, res there. That's not good. Now, as you guys know, probably, um, I am not the best PVMer in this game. So, like, so I definitely feel like I'm doing it a fair bit of justice. Uh, like, if I was a pro PVMer, didn't make any mistakes, then it's not very accurate, is it? Ooh, good job I ate there. Didn't put the shield on. It's not... <laughs> first death. Right, back in. Let's go. Let's not waste any time. See, I feel like it was quite easy. I just need to not mess up. 
Ah, oh, the res. Revolution is going to screw me over a million times. We would have got that kill if it wasn't for Revolution. Again, uh, Revolution screwing it up there. Right, I'm going to come back with full manual because this isn't working. So basically what was happening was I was on Revolution and I'm just not really all that experienced with it anymore. Obviously, I used to use this as a lower level player back in the day, but I stopped doing that back at Telos because it was doing things like interrupting uh, by using an ability before Resonance was ready. So like it's about a split second before it's ready, use an ability and then it's got global cooldown until I can use it. But I changed the full manual just to check if this would work. Obviously, if you guys have a bit more experience with Revolution, this would absolutely be possible. People do tell us on Revolution, so don't worry about that too much. And it turned out this went pretty well. I managed to do a couple of trips where I got three kills per trip. And then I did a trip where I got four in one trip as well. Now, I'd say that it's more realistic to expect to get about three kills per trip. Uh, once you've got a bit of experience on making sure you get the res hits on every range hit that he does. And then, obviously, your res won't be ready for every single one. So, use debilitate at the beginning of each rotation of the next one. Now, guys, this isn't a guide. I was just looking to see if this was worth it. So, that's as far as I'm going to go of explaining how the kill works. But, obviously, look up a guide and absolutely, you'll be able to do this boss to make a bit of profit. Now, what happened was I did about three kills in about 10 to 12 minutes. And so we'll just round that up to 15. And looking at it, I got about 400k per trip. That's really, really good. And that takes us up to around about 1.8 mil to 2 mil per hour. With the lance drop, you're going to be able to put that up a hell of a lot more because it's currently about 45 mil. So that is incredibly good. And just it just gives you a better way than sending the Grand Exchange to go and make some money. So boss number one, Vindicta, absolutely you can do this boss on no curses, no overloads, and probably just about 90 on any combat style. Okay, so finishing off at Vindicta, let's move on to boss number two, which is going to be the Twin Furies. Now, I figured I'd stick at God Wars Dungeon 2, uh, seeing as these are kind of the low level bosses that have still got decent mechanics, and I think I might be able to get away with doing some of them. So let's start off here. We'll do just one more boss for this video. We'll just do this Twin Furies because it's getting quite long, and then we'll plan out all the ones for the next ones. Maybe we'll go and try something a lot harder in the next one. We'll see how you guys react to this video. Anyway, let's get our kill count and let's see how this goes. I'm ranging it to begin with. We may have to go sell off the gear and buy melee gear or mage gear. We'll give it a shot with range, see how it works. If we get absolutely smashed, then we'll have to try something else and see if we can make it work that way. Right, so time to go and give the Twin Furies a good chance and see if we can actually do it. Like I said, we're going to be starting off with range and same as last time. Uh, we'll probably use the ranged aura for the accuracy because I think that's going to be pretty important. We've got our book, but I also went and invested in some vulnerability bombs. Now, for anyone who doesn't know, these just apply the vulnerability spell uh, without actually having to use it. And you can only throw it from your action bar. So let's get that slotted there. Um, and it'll just give me 10% extra damage. So it'll just help out quite a lot with that. Anyway, uh, fastest, let's give this a go. Hopefully it goes all right on the first time round. I'm not uh, getting my hopes up too high for this boss, but let's uh, see how it goes. Uh, and you've got to dodge this guy and also, ah, because we're getting attacked with range and melee, um, we literally are taking so much damage. Then as long as you move to the side for that, then you're good to go without taking any damage. We might have to try this with uh, Vampora for sure. So we're halfway through. We might, Maybe we can get one kill per trip. Get a rapid fire off before we have to surge away. And move. Just in time. Oh, we should be good. Come on. There we go. So we did get 65k. Um, we've got the sigil piece, so that's quite useful if we do ever try to do Telos. Um, but that was a lot of food. Like we've used our full inventory of food. I think we've made profit because it was just sharks. But like that, I think after you've used things like your book, um, paying for weapon repairs and that, that might not be worth it. 
After giving the Twin Furies a pretty decent attempt, I came to the decision that this is not a boss that I would be able to do at a lower level. Without the DPS to be able to get the bosses down quick enough, and without like having Soul Split or anything like that to be able to keep my health up, or just having better defensive gear, then it just it's I was losing too much health and I couldn't kill the boss quick enough to be able to get the fights over before I run out of food. I could probably guarantee getting one kill per trip. However, by the time you've eaten all of your inventory of food, you've taken into account potions. If, I'm, if you're using vulnerability bombs like I was to be able to get through the kills, in the end, it doesn't really end up being worth it, in my opinion. However, I mean, you could go and try this boss every now and again for something to do. If you get a rare drop, like, really luckily, you get it on the first few kills, then you're still going to be in profit. But the rare drops from here aren't incredibly expensive. You do have the chance to get the um, crest from here, the crest of Zamorak, and that is just under 15 mil. But with the chance of getting the blades of the Avarice and blade of Nomura, the chances of getting them is more than getting a crest, and they're only about 5.5 mil each. So... At the end of the day, personally, I don't think this boss is worth doing until you've got enough sort of gear, combat levels, and maybe soul split or something like that to make sure that you can do it incredibly efficiently, and that way you can get the kills through, not waste a lot of supplies, and get your drops and make it a lot more profitable. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this episode of the series, guys, and obviously I do hope you guys are enjoying this, and I hope it's something that's quite interesting, especially for you guys who are lower level and want to get into bossing in this game. Find other ways to make money um, as a lower level, and also, even if you just want to, go ahead and try something new. Anyway, that's pretty much going to be how we call it for this video. Two of the bosses, one of them, Vindicta, was probably something you can do with fairly low gear, where you can get yourself a decent income from doing that, and it's very enjoyable able to do good way to learn bossing too and also the twin furies weren't all that successful but you know maybe you guys know better than i do hopefully if you do try it then you have some good luck anyway thanks for watching really appreciate it if you enjoyed the video make sure to leave a like make sure to subscribe if you're new around here i'll be continuing this on depending on the feedback to it so get in the comments let me know if you enjoyed it or if there's anything that you'd like to see me do differently in future episodes and maybe one day we'll reach the goal of trying telos on a lower level account once we get magic up to 90 maybe that might be the next goal to get all of the melee and magic stats up to at least 90 and then go on from there but we're not getting curses we're not getting overloads or anything like that because that just sort of removes the focus of this whole series anyway guys hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next one see you later guys bye